so um, if anybody would like, you all see these QR codes. These QR codes are actually active. You could use your phone, put your phone over the QR code, either the ones over the wall or over the ones that the one that I have um, up right now. Um, and you'll hear a voice coming through reading um, in the particular language that we're that we're looking at, whichever QR code you pick. In this case, is the German translation. And I, I'm going to go ahead and um, again, I'm, I apologize for some reason the sound. I do have supposedly the sound being shared, but I'm going to try this one more time and see if it pops through. So let's try it. We're going to just, uh, I'm enlarging this image so that you could see the, the, the letter in German. Um, and, you know, if you haven't figured it out already, they're all reading the uh, Give Me Your Tired uh, poem. Are you able, do you want to say a few words about your work? Well, sure. Thanks so much for uh, having me be part of the exhibition. I'm really pleased to be able to share my work. It's work on porcelain. Um, I was inspired by our political events and had thoughts of my grandmother. And when she came to America, I wondered who translated Emma Lazarus poem to her as her passenger ship entered Ellis Island and she um, came to America. So that was the inspiration for this project. <clears throat> and then I was able to um, fortunately look at the community of people in my life. And uh, for the most part, every language translation is uh, a translation that's been given to me by either a friend or an acquaintance. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel um, very blessed. And I also feel like that's definitely um, what we are, you know, America is like. We all, we're surrounded by so many cultures. Mm -hmm. and, and this was a series of 16 that you created and finished in time for the show, um, correct? I, I believe you said something about that there was a total of 25 that you were planning well, on doing. 24, I'm, I'm meeting with um, Anjali Ray, who's given me the Bengali translation, and I'm going to be getting um, an audio from her this week. So I'm, I'm I have just a few more audios that I have to add to it, but I have to date 24 translations. And what is your, how are you choosing which languages? Uh, what is that based on? Based on the people in my life. Um, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I went to a dentist and he's from Persia and I was very pleased to see oh, that. I mean, I do have a Persian translation and I'll be getting perhaps an audio from him. Um, people at, at the, a pottery studio, uh, one of my classmates is Greek and she offered her husband's um, translation. Uh, another studio mate is Chinese. I have a good friend who's Lebanese, so I have the Arabic. Um, and just living in New York and just, just meeting people and within my circle, there are 24, 24 or 25 languages that are coming into my world. Mm. So was this maybe why you were looking at the 24 to 25 languages then? Yeah, I mean, it's just been involved. It's, it's an ongoing project. Um, so anytime I meet somebody and, and, and you know, learn that they might be um, from a different uh, country, um, you know, I'll ask them if they'd like to contribute. Well, what's interesting about this is it's, it is interactive. It's modern dealing with technology. You're incorporating current day communicative technology with sound, uh, with the visual, um, with language and communicating this idea of what it is to be American. While at the same time, it's, it's, a, it's a growing experience because it's forcing you also to meet people and or to incorporate the people in your lives that you may not have taken the time as much to get to know or you know it's just it, it's something that just shows like this real active it's an act, active effort that you've made as an artist to connect to others that are different from yourself but it's not I can't even actively search people out it's just people in the pottery uh, friends at you know I might meet somebody at a, a party or as I said that my new dentist um, just it's just within my daily life 
um, I, I is, guess I guess what I mean by action is just a little bit more of a generic term that that there is you as an artist you can't create this without other people involved correct, without correct. these people so there's the active interaction with others that for right. you to be able to create this work that's what I mean like more of the yeah. you know a, not activist in any way necessarily just just having to uh make an action in order to get the result uh, right and, and, and then the generosity of the people I mean everybody has really been so um generous and willing to and offering um the translations Yes, and it's so amazing to hear the different voices when you do use mm -hmm. the QR code and you hear those. I'm just sorry I can't share that. I don't know why the sound isn't working as well. Again, it's, our technology is limited at the moment and it has to do probably more than anything with Zoom because it is working on my end. I can hear the voices coming through, but it's just the sound for some reason isn't sharing on Zoom even though I did select that option. <laughs> so I apologize to everyone. Um, please, you know, uh, of course, more motivation to be here in fall of 2022 to see that work in person. Dame tu cansado, tu pobre, tu masas acorrucadas, ansiosas de respirar libre, el desdichado, rechazado de tu inmensa orilla, Envíame a estos los desamparados a la tempestad a mí. Levanto mi lámpara al lado de la puerta dorada. So I, we're not gonna we're not gonna go away from the Naj uh, <laughs> artists anytime soon. Joy, again, uh, talk a little bit about this work, which is also very near um, near to the other work in the space. While I was doing this, I realized that most of the people that have contributed have came to America between, I think the latest or earliest was in the 50s, 1950, and um, to present. And they didn't go through Ellis Island. They had to go through other channels to become citizens, come to America. And they didn't have trunks. They had wheelies, you know, little, little cases that they took on the planes or however they got here yeah. and so I thought that as an iconic item I would create these small porcelain suitcases to represent the um, immigration during that period so it's like the late 20th early 21st century so more more recent migration when these right. Right. Have existed um, right yeah, you know, when first looking at this piece, I think uh, myself and the jurors thought that it was more la actual life size. Um, and it wasn't until, you know, we started like making the uh, virtual objects and realizing, oh, the dimensions are such that, that it was much smaller. It's very, you know, trump -loyan in that sense, when you look at it in a photograph. Um, but um, so, uh, you know, uh, you know I, I thought, gosh, you know, if these were only life size, how amazing. But I, I imagine the challenge that would be to try to make that in ceramic yeah. large, large scale, <laughs> near impossible, I would, I would guess. But well, um, considering it, but given the fact that to do a mold, because these are slip cast. Yes. I originally had a 3D printing of a small uh, suitcase, and then I made a slip cast mold, a uh, right. plastic mold so um, I could produce them and they're not quite, you know, not, not very big. Um, I would, I have thought of doing larger ones, but- That would be do, phenomenal if you could figure yeah. out how to do that. That would be but really I just incredible. have to get proper facility to be able to do yeah. that and assistance because they're pretty heavy. But um, and, I look- you know, The interesting thing about this suitcase as well is that sometimes that's the only suitcase that only like, personal property that they come to the country with is all in one small carry on like this, um, which shows you, you know, how much has to be left behind. Yeah. Um, if you could imagine trying to pack up your entire life in one of these little bags, I don't know about you, but when I travel, there's no way I can just travel in one little bag like this, <laughs> but much less, you know, to immigrate from one place to another. It's, yeah. it's, it says so much. I have a question for you. And that is, um, have you thought about incorporating indigenous languages, and how you would how would be how you would incorporate um, mm -hmm. indigenous people 
from this country who all speak different languages? I think that's a whole other issue. I don't think it's- Well, it's I know, but it is, It. I mean, I'm just wondering, that's how, why I'm asking that. Have you considered how you could possibly incorporate indigenous languages into- Yes, I have. Um, I, thought, I, noticed, I noticed that one of these was Creole. Like you had the Creole language. Yeah. 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 And the other thing that I, that I learned about is that I have a friend who's from Jamaica and um, the native language in Jamaica is English. And a lot of the, kind of like, uh, the countries uh, where immigrant, Im immigrants come are from English speaking language. So that's another thing that I'm working on. Uh -huh. um, so uh, who, who knows? I mean, if you if you do pursue the idea of something for indigenous people, maybe it would be done in a different, completely different way. Maybe it doesn't have to do with the Statue of Liberty. Maybe it has to do with, exactly. you know, some oh, other okay. component yeah, that, of how they were, you know, mistreated. Well, yeah, that's a, that's a whole, I think that's a whole very, very different issue, which I'm very close to and very aware yeah. of and have yeah. thought about it. But I, I don't think there's... Um, it's, you know, for another series, I think. Like it's perhaps. definitely a series, definitely for another series. So um, is uh, Viv Viviana my here? Viviana, my, my paisana, I believe. That, <laughs> no, I'm from Argentina. I, my family's from Argentina too. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yes. <laughs> we can speak in Spanish then. Yeah, yeah, we, we could. <laughs> with an Italian accent. I don't, with an Italian accent, and I'm not sure if that would be fair to everyone, though. <laughs> go, go right ahead. Let's let's hear about your expa. I know well, what that means. My expa means expatriate. This is how th this shows how I, how I felt at the beginning when I came to this country 35 years ago. Of course, it was very hard to adjust to a new life, different life, di different customs. But of course, after 35 years, I feel at home. Mm -hmm. So yes. sometimes, it's you not, spend, sometimes you spend more time here than in your previous No, homeland. actually, not yet, not <laughs> yet. My parents, 50, 50 plus years here and the only 20 to 30 in, in Argentina. So oh, it gets your last way. name? Your last I, name? Caidela, yes, Caidela. Uh -huh. My mom okay. is McCormick. My mom is Irish and my father's Italian, so. Okay. <laughs> Well, um, as you see, there's you. an X. Yeah, there's an X, a P, and an A. Um, this is to these guys that I'm an expatriate because I didn't put the, the whole, the whole uh, uh, um, word. I mean, but well, in Spanish, I use, in Spanish we use this term expa as a way of referring to a person. Yeah, expatriate. True. Yeah. Well, expatriada, actually, mm -hmm. yeah. but yes, expa. And well, this is it. No much to say. So <laughs> why, why, why choose the abstraction? I'm curious how. Well, actually, I am a sculptor. Mm -hmm. I don't know if oh, you can oh. see. Do you mm -hmm. see my sculptures there? Yeah. OK. Three or four years ago, I had a surgery in my spine. So it's very hard for me to sculpt these days because these are medium size, big size uh, sculptures. So I decided to try painting and, and I love it. I really, I love it because it's easier. I have a nice um, studio in my house and it, it's easier for me. So I started, um, exploring different materials. I tried oil, I didn't like it. I try, uh, tried um, acrylics. I like acrylics, but, but ink is my best uh, material to express myself. So, okay. well, this is my story. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for sharing. And thank you okay. for participating in the show. Thank you so much for including me in this show, lovely show. It's beautiful. I love the colors. I love the, the placement of the letters that they're not, they're a little um, off. They're not like perfectly aligned. Yeah, true. And I, I think it makes it more interesting. Um, and your eye just sort of travels around the whole thing. 
um, almost like traveling around the world. Yes. Yeah, because it's there's like a, a sky off. and yeah, yeah. and you, I, you, I don't know if you can see, but there are lines in black and those lines take you to, to, to everywhere in the piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it looks kind of like there's a map-like quality to it. There's this almost a landscape in, in that you see, the sky cloud-like effect that you see as well. Um, mm. So it, it is, and it, there's a certain lusciousness to the colors that are just really eye-catching. So that's pretty amazing. So thank you again. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Everybody. Okay, and um, um, Mariko, or is Mariko Bird here today? Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't remember seeing her. So, did Shaheen, Shaheen come back at all? What? Her work. I don't think I showed you. There's some beautiful handwritten writing here on the side. It's quite mm -hmm. lovely. So um, one thing I will bring up now for those uh, people who are not here able to talk about their work, there will be a catalog that um, Esteban, who is on my staff, is going to be working on next, where we're going to capture all of the artworks and the artist statements and all the awards, uh, at least the awards so far, um, <coughs> and we'll be uh, pro uh, producing that catalog as a semester goes by. Um, is Amanda Love here to speak about this work? And I'm here. I'm going to do the enlarged version because I think it's more it's more clear than what we have in the virtual exhibition. Go ahead and oh. tell every share every bit with everybody about your work. Uh, hi everyone. My name is Amanda Love. This is my piece called Word Matter. Um, and this image, it's uh, 10 feet by 12 feet, uh, yeah, 12 feet. And now it's 10 feet by 15 feet. So it has grown since uh, this image was taken. It was in an exhibition this summer. Um, but it is compiled of um, books that would have been destroyed. They were headed to the trash. Um, we are friends with, um, family, a company in Cleveland that has a, a book depository where um, that's actually the backside of the sculpture. The right, what you're looking at right now um, are the spines of the, um, of the books. And I can't remember if I sent you guys a detail of that, but the side, yep. And this is the front, uh, Oh, so maybe when we now that we know that we will make sure to when we exhibit it, we'll make sure to do it the right way. Um, oh, it's okay. yeah, no, no. I mean, each, every fine. side, you know, in a three dimensional work like this, every side is is the front in a way. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, you know, we'll we'll be respectful of that when the time comes. And um, oh. are, are you local? Um, no, I uh, just moved to Granville, Ohio. Uh, Denison University is here. Okay. Um, we just moved here recently from Chicago. Um, okay. So and... make make sure when you send the when you ship this to us um, for next year that uh, you give us really good instructions of how to install it and make sure we're we're doing things the right way. Yeah. Yeah. So was there more you wanted to say? I, I was doing a little. Oh, um, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, it's fine. Um, so the. The piece is compiled of about 3,000 um, hardbound books. And um, for me, I, when this piece was um, put being put together, I was doing a residency at Dawes Arboretum. And I was outside um, photographing things in nature. Um, and I, I very much, a lot of my work um, deals with repetition of um, shape and form. And um, to me, what happened is this piece became very much about uh, repetition and forms in nature and whether that be water. When you look at this piece, when it's um, on a horizontal plane, it very much it looks like water or a mountainscape. Um, it's extremely meditative um, in the 
image that you guys are looking at now, it would that's like with light being cast and it does go flat like that I did in that um just there it does go flat like that, which is really cool. Um and it's completely um different when light is being um like shot through it. It um has that other image effect. But um so for me it's very much about the repetition and um, form. And so right now the research I'm doing is on consilience, um, which is what I'm what I'm learning is these shapes that you saw in the in this image right here. Um, it could be, it, you know, there's a lot of things in nature that take that form. And that's what I'm exploring right now. Can I ask a question about like how how did you attach it? <laughs> uh there were uh, there were a lot of uh um hmm. there were a lot of different <laughs> methods for trying that the first one I'm, I'm actually a book binder I had a book binding studio in Chicago for about 14 years um so and I've done a lot of conservation work as well and um so there are different hinge materials that you can use that are um one that's really great is uh, Tyvek. And then um, I applied an adhesive on either side of the Tyvek and then had it like a bookmark going through all the books. Um, but that method did not work. It was called um, like repeating failure or something. I, I actually worked with an engineer to come up with the uh, final construction. So in the final construct, uh, repeat, repeat failure, something like that but each book is um is shot with an air gun with little tiny brads on a strap on a vinyl strap and each one is held individually in space um so they're not resting on each other they look like they're resting on each other but they're not and um yes it took a long time <laughs> I, I do love the um, waterfall quality that it does have. Like you could tell that there is that effect. It's really interesting. And like you said, this sort of the texture of like a cliff uh, or rockiness, rocky uh, material. So it, it really is interesting to see it. And then to, I, I really, you know, at first we wanted to, we tried putting this in the back gallery where it's a little lower ceiling and mm -hmm. a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know, with the way that, you know, the little bit about how I design the space is I was looking at like commonalities between the work and all of these works had to do with language and knowledge and historical commentaries of some sort, uh, immigration was what became a part of that, um, you know, coming from different languages and coming from different backgrounds, but the idea of language and books was all connected uh, in this section. So that's what um, connected all of, all of this uh, there. Yeah, it, it looks beautiful. It's kind of it amazing is. how you're able to do this. <laughs> it is, it's really exquisite. 